Yo, what's good, y'all, man? We got Chucky Season 2, Episode 3, Spoiler Review, Breakdown, and Easter Eggs. Another good episode, man. I, I ain't gonna lie for a minute. I was like, what episode we on? Like, I, I forgot what episode we on. You know what I mean? But we on Episode 3, man. And it, it was good, though. I give it an 8 out of 10. It was good for me, though, man. You got, you got, now you got two Chuckies now. I don't know who buy, I don't know who Questmark is, though. Who is buying all the Chuckies, though? That's the question mark, man. Who is buying all the Chuckies? Cause now we got one Chucky. You know, what I'm saying? I think I think he a different version of the of the other Chucky. But you know, what I'm saying then we got then we got the Hulk Chucky. You know, what I'm saying? we got the muscular Chucky. You feel me, man? So we got we got we we getting all these Chuckies though. I don't know who buying them. I think it's the the, the priest. I don't know. It's somebody or the older old lady. I don't know, man. But that's that's the question mark right there. Though. That's the question mark. So now we got two Chuckies running around, man. You know what I'm saying? We got the, the muscular Chuck, uh, the muscular Chucky. He, he took that motherfucker heart out. Like he actually took that dude heart out, man. Like he had no remorse, and we saw that bitch was beating. They showed that bitch. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, it's Red R too. I think I think the show Red R, right? I think the show Red R. I believe so. If it is, yeah, they show that bitch beating. The heart is beating. Got big ass hole in his chest. Took that motherfucker out like it ain't like it ain't nothing. And I'm thinking like, oh shit, the other Chucky's back. But then it's the other Chucky, the new Chucky came out the box. So I'm like, man. And then the other Chucky trolling and shit, talking like, you know, he, you know, good way he ain't good and shit. They, they thought he was good, talking about, you know, really he wasn't good. The other Chucky killed a um, what a confession, what a priest, whatever that dude was that was drinking while he was doing confession, which that was crazy though. But yeah. But hey, um, yeah, let's, let's see the Easter eggs, man. Like it up, man. Good show, though. No cap. And um, let me know comment below what y'all think on, on episode three. But um, yeah, like it up, sir. So, um, yeah, let's get it. No. Yeah, you got <laughs> you got the stairs too. Shades on. <laughs> You got to walk into it, too, though. You, you why got the boys and shit. I'm like, man, who, who this supposed to be, though? Like, who that supposed to be, Terminator or some shit? Like, the fuck? Hello, my Chucky fans. We are now in episode three of the Chucky TV series season two. And, oh, my goodness, things are only getting better from here. And what exactly I'm going to be doing here for you guys is giving you my full episode breakdown on this one titled Hail Mary, where we not only get the introduction of what is probably going to be my favorite version of a Chucky doll. Yeah, I, never, I never saw that version, though. But that version looked rip and hey. He ain't playing around too. If y'all saw how he killed that motherfucker, his first kill, yeah, he ain't playing around and shit. Chucky, you had your <laughs> run, but nothing can beat some oily, smooth, muscular Chucky skin. As well as pointing out some Easter eggs and things you might have missed, but I need to hear from you, Chucky fans. Did you ever think there would come a day where we would get a buff Chucky that would. T nah, I never know. I never know we had a buff Chucky. I ain't that, that came out of nowhere. Take down somebody Mortal Kombat style on screen, as well as your theories and predictions for what you think is coming, because we got some major hints in this episode. But jumping straight into episode three of the Chucky TV series, we open up here with Father Bryce lecturing Jake. And the main thing he's hounding him about right now is it's been three days and that Chucky doll that went missing has not been returned to his desk and he's starting to get a little upset. That yeah, he thought it was down. It wasn't though, but I think they know what's going on, but they acting dumb as hell. That is my opinion, though, but yeah. That brings us to <laughs> yeah, the crew who have the Chucky doll oh, all strapped don't. up and are trying to get answers on what exactly he was doing. We all had the same theory here that this doll basically is just keeping an eye on what everyone is doing, was taking pictures and then sending them to the boss, Chucky, or as he's known on his phone, the Colonel. I would not be surprised then if that is the name of... Oh, the man, yeah, cause I was saying, like, that might not, not be the original Chucky, which I was, I'm was i already knowing. He probably, you know, them dolls that from the truck. That survived somehow. I think that's probably that. And then he talked to the boss man. Some, some, some shit. Some shit. The Chucky doll that we saw show up at the end. But it kind of gives us an idea to the way Chucky is sort of structuring his layout and different jobs with his Chucky dolls. For all we know, though, is that just could be the name of the lead Chucky doll that is giving out all the orders. Long hair goals, L5 dream lengths, strengthens hair's length, and helps seal split ends. <laughs> Or 
supporters. And well, right before we jump to this week's title card sequence, I want to point out one of my favorite lines that Chucky has said in a while. You know... If you're gonna pull my hair, at <laughs> least tell me I'm pretty. That right there, I think, is a perfect balance of Chucky using his sick humor and also being creepy at the same time. Bringing us to the title card sequence that is just made up of a bunch of crosses. This will really play into the theme of this episode, like most of the title cards, but it is probably my favorite theme that they have tackled so far. Because like I said last week, this Catholic religious setting is one that kind of hits home for me. We cut to Jake, who's in the middle of class, when the teacher puts an image on screen that kind of sort of resonates with Jake. Not just that, but after the class is over, the teacher walks up to him and has sort of a nice little heart to heart with him where we're starting to get the nuggets here that Jake might actually be taking in the teachings that are being given to him, something I didn't expect to happen. And then it's kind of this mm. inception idea put into Jake that he thinks he can apply that to Chucky and sort of break him. This was an idea I would have thought was ridiculous, was dumb. How could you really break Chucky? The character that we saw in Seed of Chucky. Yeah, they're trying to like move his head and shit like they, you can't break Chucky man and they, they thought he did well they thought they did but they, they didn't though like he was trolling the whole time talking about oh I'm Chucky. You want to play? You know what Chucky I mean? Chucky that was freaking <laughs> jerking it to some horror magazines. How do you break an already very sick mind? Yet they somehow managed to do so through overstimulating him with stuff that Chucky... I mean, they, they, they did, but they they didn't you know what i mean you said it was kind of motherfuckers likes like some good gore horror movies the ones that i caught that were being shown to him are movies like the thing dark man and i believe psycho 3 although some of you guys might correct me on that to the point where it actually worked on chucky he was vomiting and kind of tired of it but just like devin here i wasn't buying it i thought this was maybe part of chucky's plan yeah i mean devin see devin Hey, that's my nigga though. That's my nigga. So we, we know he be bullshitting. They, them three, they, I don't know, man. So I don't, I don't know, man. Like, Devin, hey, that's my nigga right up, man. Right in the back. Yeah, that, hey, that's my nigga. And that he's not really reformed. There's no way. They know that he be bullshitting. <laughs> Come on. Now. Way after one lesson, he's just gotten all good. But this is sort of mirroring what Jake has been going through within the school, where he really is starting to kind of accept a little bit of the teachings because they're just so forcefully being put on him. In order to forgive ourselves, first we have to forgive those who have sinned against us. I don't know how much more I can take if I really want to forgive myself. I have to be able to forgive him first. I wonder later in the season if this might cause a divide between Jake and Devin, especially with us seeing that Father Bryce wit. Oh, uh, yeah, he's on Christmas. I lie. They got at least, man, they got at least go to the room and do that, man. You know, he be snooping around, man. You know, the priest be. What's going on? You feel me? Like, you know. No, man. Witness them kissing. He is definitely going to try and draw a wedge between the boys. And I just think all these layers that the Chucky TV series is bringing in for season two are working really well. Because like I said, there was no way I would have ever bought them actually trying to brainwash Chucky. But when you mirror it with brainwashing religion and getting taught that kind of stuff, then I think it's kind of believable and applicable to this murderous doll. But here is where I do want to rewind a little bit because I was just too excited with the way they played that out. We do get one fascinating Easter egg. As Nadine was going around and gathering stuff that they could brainwash Chucky with, we see one of the things Nadine happened to find was a mixtape belonging oh, yeah. to Eddie Caputo. If you remember, this is the partner of Charles Lee Ray when he was in human form that showed up in Child's Play 1 that Chucky eventually killed and also was a part of Chucky Season 1 where we see that Charles and Eddie Caputo actually met in this same uh, yeah, sure, sure. location back when it was a group home. This is the thing that made me excited about the kids going to this sort of Catholic school because of the connections it has to Chucky. Nadine loves to sneak around and steal stuff, so maybe she found a secret hideout that used to belong to Charles, or like we've been saying, something fishy is going on with Nadine, and there's more to her character. I told you, man, she, I'm telling y'all, something going on with her, man. I said it since we, we, we found out about her, episode one. Like I said, something going on with her, man. But we don't know yet. We don't, we don't know yet, man. We, we, we don't know yet character than we know. On. I've already seen some fans bust out theories that maybe she's related to Eddie Caputo. I'm trying not to get fooled twice and think that they're just pulling another red herring, making her obviously suspicious when there's nothing really going on with her. But after the way they made her so likable in this episode, because the actress playing Nadine is doing a great job, and the friend 
Yeah, she is doing. Yeah, she 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 she's doing good acting. Friendship and closure she's building with Lexi throughout this episode makes me feel like she's going to be the Eddie from Stranger Things season four of Chucky season two. You know that thing Stranger Things loves to do, where they introduce one likable, super awesome character only to kill them towards the end, so you feel really heartbroken. That's the vibes I'm kind of getting here from Nadine. So. Let's not get too attached to her. The, <laughs> the other easter egg we did get in here that I thought was awesome was also another callback to the first child's play where after Chucky has kind of been brainwashed and maybe he's just going through memories of his life, he mentions a line from the first child's play that Andy Barkley says. Aunt Maggie, Chucky wants to watch the nine o'clock news. Aunt Maggie, Chucky wants to watch the nine o'clock news. Uh, it's never been easier to get started you're ready to tell your story with adobe premiere pro okay black adam you have my attention this friday a new era in the dc universe arrives this can only end one way send them all black adam get tickets now ready pg-13 I thought that was a great callback. And since we were just talking about Lexi and the struggle she's going through in this episode, man, I'm up and down with her right now. I've gotten to the point now where I obviously like the Lexi character. It was unimaginable early on in season one when she was just a horrible person. But we've grown with her and seen her go through some stuff that I think most of us like her by now. But the one thing I'm not loving about her is this whole drug addiction subplot. And yeah, I was saying, but she a, she a drug addict. I don't like God. And that's lots of, that's lots of medicine. You feel me? Now she can't. Well, no, well, no, I think she found some more because now I do put some in his jaw. I need to like, you know what I mean? Um, what you call it? Get in trouble some type of way? I don't know some shit. But yeah, it, this character right here. I mean, hey, it's like real life though. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> some people, people like this in real life. No cap, like they can't last a, a day. Well, you feel me? So. Yeah, type shit. And this has nothing to do particularly with Lexi or even this show, but I've seen enough TV shows and drama that have this sort of drug addicted character that just becomes a nuisance, a problem, is battling this addiction. I know it's something that really happens and is serious. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, that should happen in real life. For people out there. But in terms of the way it's used in a TV show, I feel like it's always very one dimensional and played out the same way. So I'm kind of just waiting for the episode where she's finally kicked that habit and has pushed it off. But admittedly, I thought they did a great job here of explaining why she kind of went down that path and why she's turning to drugs just seeing this Chucky doll that was responsible for the death of her boyfriend Junior which we could say is probably the first love of her life and Chucky's just casually seeing his name in front well, I like, Junior, Junior. I'm like damn that motherfucking's a savage Whenever causing a panic attack in her that's where I have to give my hats off to the way this is playing now because now it's intrigued me from here is where we see another doll is being delivered yep. to the I'm like, oh my god God, who, who, who send these dolls to him, man? School, and that's kind of where I realized, oh my goodness, that Chucky doll has actually changed. It's actually a good guy now. So much so that they have sent another doll there to kind of shut it up and make sure it doesn't spill any information. And the first casualty oh okay caused by this doll is one of the fathers in the school i thought this was going to count as the one kill quota per episode not a bad one chucky strangling somebody i mean that so that's the buff chucky that yeah, that would kill what he was called before was he was one. chucky the lakeshore strangler but then i was not ready at all for what chucky was about to do to the trevor character before ah uh -huh, yeah no nah, that motherfucker he's not that shit man they they were list like it. he overkilled that motherfucker. Like it was like a bill game or some shit. Like that that kill was overkill. Before we even get to this gnarly wicked kill, I want to mention here how the Chucky TV series is not only surpassing my expectations, but subverting them. A character like Trevor, who's an a-hole bully and is out to get one of the main characters because of Vendetta from his past, is something I think a lot of TV shows would have ran to the ground. Trevor would have become a character that would have stayed through all the way throughout this season, just being overused as the a-hole we all hate and can't wait for Chucky to get to, and that's how they were kind of building him up here, and we actually get to see Chucky get rid of him as soon as we hate him they're not trying to milk caricature characters for all they're worth they know trevor is a one-dimensional bully no point having him drag out throughout the season let's just get rid of him in a crazy way thank you chucky tv series <laughs> i don't know how much of this kill i'm gonna be able to show on this video but man this was one awesome kill oh, I'm saying, yeah I, i'm already knowing because if, if you do it they might they, they might still be able to comment 
But that kill, that bro, we saw the heart beating while you took that thing off his chest. Off his chest, man. A big hole in his chest. Man. Well, and I myself was like, dang, how is this Chucky doll so strong? And why does it kind of have a little bit of vibration and bass to his voice? Eventually revealing it to us that we have gotten ourselves here above Chucky yeah, doll. Yeah, above, yeah. Oh, they I don't it. even know what we call this version of Chucky. I, was, I, don't, I, call it, I don't know what to call it, Hulk. Like, that's a halt right there or some shit. I don't know what to call that motherfucker. Chucky, I have to say, if you would have told me the show was going to introduce a Chucky doll that had abs and muscles, I would have said, oh, no, they're going back to see the Chucky stuff. They're just treating it like a joke. They're making this doll funny again and getting rid of the horror elements. Why? But the way this doll was introduced with doing one of the most brutal kills and also being sent as this last resort to get rid of this Chucky doll that has turned good, they have presented this doll in a way where I don't think of it as them just going funny and comedic again with Chucky. Like, of course, this is hilarious. But now that I have seen the strength of this Chucky doll and a couple episodes ago, we saw Chucky getting kicked around by a couple of teenagers. We need something like this now. This doll, when it finally dies this season or whatever happens, it's going to be one glorious, awesome death. And I'm excited to see this doll do some damage. I <laughs> yeah, me too. I wonder if they're at all going to explain how this happened. Was this like the Chucky doll that was just forced to work out all this time until it finally got strong? Did Chucky go to like a different toy store, get a three foot tall G.I. Joe doll, swap out the body and then... Ade Dwe Dembella wake it up? Who knows, but you know what? I'm on board for this. It just kind of sucks that the third kill of this episode had to be the good guy doll Chucky. He was really adorable eating that apple. I would have liked to have seen them have a good Chucky doll for a little bit, but it ain't gonna happen now. So really, <laughs> Facts. yeah, I'm having a great time this season. I'm Yeah, me too. This, this season good. I did episode good, I mean. Kind of upset we didn't get Glenn and Glenda in here. I thought they obviously teased them last episode, and then they were... Yeah, I thought they were going to have them, but they, they was focused on, like, the main... Well, you know what I'm saying. The, 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 the capsule. You know what I'm saying. That main, main shit. Nowhere to be seen here, but it looks like next episode, it will be the Tiffany, Glenn, and Glenda-centered episode. So that'll be a lot of fun to finally see those twins back on screen. I think the only other complaint I have here or concern is, like, man, why did they move the body? Why did they move Trevor's body? Like... That's just going to make them look so much more. So That's what I was sound like. Damn. They going to be like, oh, they can, you know what I mean? They should just, I don't know, they should do something with that. Suspicious. Now they're tasked with getting rid of that body, and I don't know how they're going to do that. I was even mm -hmm. more kind of upset that, like, Jake and Devin just left the room and left the two girls to handle that body. Like, what the <laughs> heck, man? I know they might be desensitized a little bit from all the killing going on, but it's like, there's still a dead body you got to deal with. Hopefully we'll get our answers soon, but I throw it off to you guys. What did you think of episode three of the Chucky TV series? What are your thoughts on buff Chucky? Do you think it is them jumping the shark, maybe pushing the boundaries a little bit too much? Or are you kind of on board with it and think, no, this, I'm excited to see where this goes. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh... Anything and everything, be sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3CFilms or on TikTok at 3CFilms. But as always, I'm Chucky Man. Take care. Yeah, nah, I like the butt chugger. The butt chugger is overkill. Like, I fuck with it, man. I fuck with it. But, hey, season three, I keep saying season three. Episode three was good, man. I fuck with episode three. You know, it's episode four. Gonna be another good episode, man. But, hey, let me know in the comment below what y'all think, man. The note. If they don't disable the comment, though, let me know in the comment below. If they do, and then, yeah, you can comment and shit. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Dark shit. But, hey, like it up, sub, and I'm yeah, Peace.